Greetings. 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 My name is Gloria Said, and I am the director for the City of Columbia's Community Development Department. We welcome you here this morning to our press conference where we will tell you about an exciting new program geared toward increasing home ownership, opportunities for individuals and families who are interested in purchasing homes inside the city limits of Columbia. We want to continue offering ways to address the challenges of how much money is needed to purchase homes and how to keep the payments affordable. Before moving forward, I would like to recognize our council people who are here or any other elected officials in the, off in the audience. We appreciate you, Councilman Duvall, for being here with us this morning. We have this morning our mayor, uh, but before we turn it over to our mayor, I would like to also recognize any other department heads who are here in support of community development today. We do appreciate you. We also have our loan committee members, Ms. Missy Coffins, who's here with us. I'm not sure if Mr. Chambers has been able to make it over. But I do want to say thank you to our loan committee members. It's only with them that we're able to get our loans approved, by the way. So we do appreciate them making themselves available on a, uh, as often as, as necessary to underwrite, uh, to, to look at the loans that we're presenting for underwriting and approval. So we do appreciate your help. On the agenda this morning, we will hear remarks from our City of Columbia Mayor, the Honorable Stephen K. Benjamin. And following Mayor Benjamin, we will hear from Felicia Kilgore. She's a Senior Loan Officer for Community Development. Felicia will tell us about the City Lender One Uplift Program, and she will also describe the features that make it one of the best mortgage lending products on the street today, one of the best. So, without further ado, I'd like to present our Mayor, Benjamin. Thank you, Gloria, and thank you to the uh, men and women of our Community Development Department uh, who partnered up with, with our CDCs and um, other uh, team players here at the city have really led the charge uh, here in the Midlands and I think also established a wonderful uh, reputation nationally uh, for helping leverage good, strong uh, public-private partnerships. Uh, this um, uh, department, with the support of city leadership, I want to thank Mr. Duval and all the members of city council uh, for their uh, aggressive support of helping to develop innovative project products uh, that go a long way to making sure that we are a city for all people. Uh, the importance of focusing on affordable housing and, and, and workforce housing uh, and, and, and making sure we support the redevelopment of more public housing is because you want to be a city that reflects a great strength and, uh, of diversity. Uh, that people who live in this city um, uh, or work in the city ought to be able to live in the city. We ought to be using uh, the, the, the levers that we have under our control, use, using uh, uh, community development block grant dollars from the federal government, but also general fund dollars to continue to be creative and, and innovative in trying to find more and more solutions to creating good housing here in the city quality housing in the city that attracts uh, millennials and, and, and young families and, and makes sure that retirees are able to stay in their homes and, and obviously uh, making sure that, um, again, we're, we're focused on, on, on a city for all people. Uh, this department has, uh, for years, developed innovative affordable housing uh, uh, programs, uh, a wonderful City Lender 1 and City Lender 2 uh, programs, uh, uh, programs focused on weatherization and rehabbing uh, either owner-occupied homes, but also those that are, that are uh, owned by landlords, uh, making sure that, that we focus on weatherization so people are able to not only live in a much more attractive home, but also uh, be able to keep their power bills down. Constant innovation, uh, and, and today is another example of that. Uh, over $18 million in outstanding loans leveraged up with some of our friends from some of our, our, our banking partners here. Uh, uh, here, uh, leveraging up a total loan portfolio of well over $100 million, focused again on making sure that Columbia is a city uh, for all people. This wonderful City Lender One Uplift Program that uh, Ms. Kilgore is going to cover uh, uh, in a moment uh, helps address some additional challenges that, that again, the, the process of iteration and constant innovation 
helps you identify how you make a program better. And, and she's going to touch on, on the specifics of, of, uh, of that challenge. Uh, we've got to make sure that in this incredibly challenging environment, we're watching uh, the economy continue to soar, but watching um, everyday uh, Americans still struggle uh, in, in many respects. The, the, the challenge of income volatility is real. Uh, the average American family, um, over half of the average American families can't afford an unexpected $400 uh, bill. How do you handle that? So we've got to make sure that we use all the levers at our disposal, all the tools that we may have, and continue to, again, be creative and, and, and iterate and innovate uh, to make sure that, that every citizen has a chance to live up to their God-given potential right here in Columbia, South Carolina. I know that I am, I know that Councilman Duval and all the members of City Council are very proud of the constant innovation here. We're going to continue to support it. We, we continue to, to devote not only general fund dollars, but directing uh, community development block grant dollars uh, to uh, our, some of our more challenging uh, areas across the city, and we're going to continue doing that. Uh, thank you, Gloria. Thank you, thank you and your team. Uh, we're going to continue uh, pushing in this direction. Happy to take some questions later on. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a great day to be in the city of Columbia. We are truly excited about this new program that we're about to launch. It's called the Ceiling One Uplift. Uh, we've heard from the residents, we've heard from our bankers, we've heard just from general uh, conversations that we need to come out with a better program to assist individuals. Generally, it falls within the working class, um, um, low to moderate incomes to help them purchase homes. We know that home ownership stabilizes families. Uh, it makes life easier. It's better for the children. So what I want to reiterate is that this program allows individuals to purchase homes up to $150,000. Only requires $500 down, and we offer this program in partnership with eight different local banks. We have some partners here with us today, and thank you. Thank you for coming to support us. So what we do is we get them qualified. You know, we ask that client to come see us. We are a fierce team of three, so we work with them. <laughs> we work with them to get them qualified and, and get them in the right direction to move forward. So it is an 80-20 loan structure, whereas our partner lenders will provide 80% of the financing, and the city will provide 20% of the financing. So we get some creative as far as the interest rates concerned. But what we're most proud of, that there's no PMI, no private mortgage insurance involved. So that's a very nice way of being able to keep their payments down low, as low as we can keep it. And put the cream on the top of this, all of this, we do provide $3,500 towards closing costs, which is huge. Um, we have never offered that in the past, at least for the past eight years that I've been here aboard with the city. And that is granted. So we would not ask them to pay that back. We just ask them to move, stay in the home, occupy the home for five years. And so, which another great way of being able to assist with home ownership. So the client do have to qualify. They do have to meet the income guidelines. A uh, single person that's looking at buying a home, the maximum income is 39,500. If it's a family of four, the maximum income is 55,000. So there's still some, some flexibility of getting folks into homes. Um, and what, what we have noticed that if you, if you, once we've gotten you qualified, you've gotten pre-approved, we've noticed that you can buy a home up to $500,000 with mortgage payments does not exceed $500. That's huge. If you look at rent today, you can't hardly find a decent apartment for no less than $800. So this is a very w great way of getting into home ownership and save them on their housing expense. Thank you, Felicia. I, I hope you all can see, based on what I said earlier, why this is one of the best loan products on the street. So we're hoping that, based on this information, our uh, real estate community, and there are many of you here today, I do want to say thank you all for being here. We appreciate partnering with you, because without you, we can't get these people in the door. And of course, you're the ones that will help them find houses. And uh, we do appreciate you. We also appreciate all of our bankers, and I would like to take a moment just to talk, to mention to you who those uh, lenders are that have partnered with us. Some have been with us for many, many years, and some are relatively new, uh, but it's through their partnership as well that we're able to, to help individuals. 
We know that we have with us First Citizens Bank. I've known Tommy for a very, very long time since we were like, well, a long time. <laughs> um, and then we also have uh, uh, individuals here from Sonovas. I see Ms. Tracy Brown, who used to be a part of the City of Columbia's uh, team in community development, but we won't hold that against you. <laughs> She's still working with us on, on the banking side. Um, but we do have uh, other lenders. I'm trying to get to my list here. We have South State Bank, Mr. Nate Barber. And uh, in addition to that, we work with Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union, Security Federal Bank, and we have Charmaine up here with us today. We have Wells Fargo Mortgage, BB&T Mortgage, Synovus, First Community Bank, and also Assurance Lending. So we do say thank you all so much for your participation with the program. So uh, having said that, I would also like to say thank you to the community development staff who's also up here with us. Thank you to city council for your forward thinking, knowing that there's a lot of different things that we have to constantly be mindful of in making those changes to meet the needs of the community as it relates to affordable housing. So having said that, um, I would now open it up for any questions that you might have for anyone. It, it seriously underscores uh, the, the challenge we face here. I mean, all across, uh, all across America, uh, this is a challenge that we're facing. How do we make sure that we have more housing options for our citizens? Uh, this is a, uh, a, a significant challenge that we face. If you look back at the last uh, uh, survey, and, and it's always uh, important to look at the fact that now that people can apply for uh, different types of public assistance online, if you look at the last survey that Columbia Housing Authority did, I think they had over 20,000 folks who asked for either help with conventional housing, Section 8 housing, or asked to uh, be in public housing. Now, some of those folks came, those requests came from uh, the West Coast and, and the Northeast as well, but it still under underscores the, the fact that there is a significant need in this metropolitan area, as there is, if you just Google search, you'll see the same discussions in Greenville and Charleston and, and Charlotte and Raleigh and, and Richmond and uh, D.C., everywhere across this country. So having more tools, uh, having more tools at your disposal and being very creative about ways in which you leverage up a finite amount of public resources to pull in a significant amount of private sector resources is, is the key. Uh, what, what this team has done over the last uh, several years, using a, 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 not a large pot of money, but using it again to leverage it so as, as, as uh, Gloria and Felicia uh, mentioned earlier, some of you, that not everyone here has a mortgage, not everyone here has spent a whole lot of time in, in, in basic finance or high finance. Uh, and I know that um, um, when I was very young, I had not yet. But using these public funds as, as, as leverage to create, uh, to take down barriers to opportunity for, uh, for folks is a very creative and thoughtful way to doing this. So we're talking about leveraging uh, 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 I guess we have about $18 million in, in these various programs now, leveraging up a, a loan portfolio that probably exceeds $125, $130 million. This is private sector money because the, because the public sector is willing to step up and, 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 and take a second position uh, to, I think we have a default rate of less than 1% or, or less than 2%. So, you, so you, you're finding that if you give people an opportunity right now, and, 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 and the, to, to specifically answer your question, I'm going to ask you your question specifically about public housing, which is something separate and apart from what our community development partners here do. But what has fueled the angst in this country, both on the far left and, and, and the far right, is that people don't feel like they're getting a fair shot. You know, give me an opportunity. If you give me an opportunity, you, you remove some of these uh, false barriers to entry just to have safe, affordable housing where I can uh, work hard, take care of my family, provide shelter, and, and be able to keep some of my income to put food on the table and educate my, my, my family, then people uh, will be successful. These types of tools remove so many of those barriers to give folks a chance to live up to their God-given potential. The challenge regarding public housing is still very real. It's still very real all across this country. Uh, the amount of resources devoted there, the, 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 I think we're talking about deferred maintenance across the country and the tens of billions of dollars. Uh, that's going to require a much more a focused macro approach from the Department of Housing and, and Urban Development. On the local level, uh, there's some things that we can do to facilitate uh, that development, and we're going to do that. Uh, I have uh, several more meetings over, over the course of this week and affordable task, uh, housing task force that we're going to be assembling, looking at how do we uh, attack this in a, in a very comprehensive way. Public housing, Section 8 housing, 
uh, of affordable housing and, and obviously uh, going all the way up to 120 percent of, of the area median income, making sure that just hardworking men and women who, 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 again, work in the city can also afford to live in the city. And just on that note, we talk about meeting with people. Have you met with the Housing Authority about this? And, and just mm -hmm. one more quick thing, if you want to add in, will this program kind of apply to the folks who already have those vouchers that they're looking for a place to live? Well, well, yes, I've met with the Housing Authority. We'll continue to meet with the Housing Authority. We'll appoint some new Housing Authority commissioners uh, today at our, at our council meeting. Uh, on the second issue, you, you're, we're talking apples and oranges. Uh, so we're, we're talking about people who are looking to become homeowners for the first time. And, and, there, are, and there are across this city um, hundreds, if not thousands, of folks who, who have um, who emerged from public housing and are homeowners in the city, some using uh, some of these tools that our affordable, uh, that our community development department has, has put forward. We give folks ladders, ladders of opportunity, and I, I guarantee you so many of them will take advantage of it. Mayor Benjamin, I don't know if you want to answer this or pass it off, but as I said, the goal of this is putting people in nice houses. What's it mean to you guys when you take a family and put them in a much bigger, nicer house for a lower payment? Well, well. The end result. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's good math. It works every day. I mean, it works every day. Uh, uh, and it's important to note, again, it's the innovation of our, of our staff partnered with the private sector. All the things that, that, that we're seeking to do and that we're going to have to do moving forward is, w is we're talking about a finite amount of resources, whether it's coming from the federal government or, or, or coming here in the city. The city of Columbia has not raised your taxes in a decade, in a, in a decade. Uh, we, we've been good stewards of taxpayer resources, just recognizing the overall tax climate and the challenges that you have with being, having so much of our land mass not on the, on the, on the tax rolls. So as, as creative as you can be in, in leveraging good, solid public-private partnerships that then manifest themselves into putting a family into a home in great neighborhoods, and we have great neighborhoods, uh, going to great schools, a wonderful you know, uh, educational innovation happening across Richland 1, Richland 2, and Lexington, Richland 5. If we continue to do that, then, then you're going to continue to build a strong, healthy city. A strong city, a healthy city, a prosperous city is nothing but a collection of great individuals and families that make up great neighborhoods that then make a great city. So uh, it, it's, it is incredibly uh, rewarding to try and help someone get in, into, a, into a home where they don't have to worry about some of the very basic things that they ought not have to worry about. It's not easy, and, and a whole lot of folks are still, uh, still struggling. It's our, it's our challenge to try and help address those needs. I can't see you. I see light, but I see a hand. All right, Kevin, okay. That's right, that's right. Uh, so um, my wife and I are fixing to close on a house uh, later this month, and uh, that's what my school. Um, and we're trying to figure out how to get people to move Partly because of the government shutdown, that some of that money is dried up as far as the federal side of things go. Uh, is there a, a finite amount of money uh, going to this program? Uh, should people, you know, get while the getting is good? I'll, uh, I'll, let, I'll let Gloria and Felicia speak to the source of, of funds, but as it relates to the federal shutdown, since you're across the river, you need to call Congressman Joe Wilson <laughs> and, 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 and make, make sure he knows we don't need to shut down the government anymore. And, and also, just so you guys know, uh, the Blossom Street Bridge and Gervais Street Bridge will soon become toll roads. Uh, so if you come across the bridge, we're going we're 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 to charge. That's a joke. That is a joke. <laughs> Please do not. If, if, you, if, you, if, you if you tweet that, if you tweet that, if, if you tweet that, put the smiley face on there as well. Uh, source of source of funds. Yeah, I could not have done that. Thank okay. you so much. <laughs> um, I will say that there isn't an endless uh, endless pot of money, but we do uh, have money uh, that we programmed for this particular uh, uh, year um, in CDBG funds that we will use for, for our housing program. So yes, we do have a certain amount of money available. Uh, we're hoping that we'll use it all uh, so that as we program funds in the future, we'll, we'll know that we sh you should continue to uh, fund that since it's a uh, very popular program. Is there a ballpark of how many people we can serve with this program? Um, based, the it, it does. We're hoping that we can help at least 15 to 20 families with the funds that we have set aside. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans to expand the program or do more like this in the future, the near future? Specifically about this program. I'm not talking about elephant <laughs> or anything. 
Of course, oh, it, well, we've been doing uh, housing programs for over 30 years. We plan to continue. They're very popular. Um, they actually help provide us with a, a revolving loan fund. So as we loan the funds, the money comes back, and then we can t continue to make affordable housing loans to the public. And for some of you, uh, it, it, it's always instructive to me. If you go to the city website, look at the community development um, um, uh, uh, page, it lays out the details about really in a, in a very um, uh, easy way to digest how these programs uh, work. Uh, but as, as, as Gora mentioned, this is a new product. If you look at the various uh, pro uh, programs we have, affordable housing, city under one to help, uh, you'll see that uh, we have 56 uh, uh, outstanding loans in the affordable housing program, city under one, 41. Uh, loans, city lender two, 109 loans. So they're, they're, they're currently uh, well over 500 loans currently being serviced, again in partnership uh, with, with, the, with the private sector and a 1% um, a, a, a delinquency rate. So this, this also tells you hard working folks that, 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 that go through the programs, the, the, the counseling to take advantage of these uh, uh, wonderful programs, uh, recognize uh, how, how great of a blessing this is and have been great stewards of, 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 the, uh, of the public trust and moving forward with this.